takes up Scheller for his uh, psychology rather than Brentano. Although he, of course, takes up Brentano in an indirect way through Hustrell. But if we look at uh, Scheller, we're going to be looking at a work that he wrote the last year of his life in 1928. His field specialty was ethics, but uh, he did write a phenomenology in the last year of his life in 1928. It was uh, published in German in 1976, and it appeared in English in 2009. So it's taken forever to get it in English. Uh, in 2009, Northwestern University finally published it. But it's really been a, a beautiful phenomenology that's been hidden from English translation from 1928 until 2009. It's, that's terrible, but uh, it took a long time to get it here uh, in the United States. And Scheller will go through the uh, basic phenomenology structure, of uh, beginning with uh, sensation and the unconscious, what he calls sensation impulsion, you know, in order to emphasize that instinctive impulsive side of our sensate life. So he calls it, uh, the first moment is ecstatic impulsion. And during ecstatic impulsion, we acquire our feeling percepts, but we acquire them through the objective expression of perceiving. An object's expression creates a feeling of a resistance or negation on the side of the self. We, we have a desire to negate the non-essential aspects of a, a feeling percept we are confronted with. Second, there's the instinct on the subjective side. And they are based on a fixed rhythm of habit through seeing and hearing. We, we store our uh, habitual experiences in an uh, unconscious workspace. And by uh, various associations, we will continue to uh, grasp our feeling percepts through that associative process. And that is the third aspect of the force centers of ecstatic impulsion is association. And the formation of the value impressions takes place as a feeling percept. It's a utility type association. We're not really trying to create any kind of a teleology. A Scheller is very anti-teleology. So he said it's a utility type association. It's acquired through trial experiments of our encounter with uh, externality. So a horizon is born, but it's a uh, instinctual horizon, not based on any kind of a external, imposed, metaphysical, or ontological teleology. It's strictly going to be an intuitive horizon that we grasp through our associative work of dealing with the objective expressions and our subject of instinct, and this is the moment of ecstatic impulsion. Ecstatic impulsion. Now, of course, when we pass through that moment of ecstatic impulsion, we're going to uh, reach that uh, moment when we order those feeling percepts into some kind of order. And Scheller doesn't uh, try to uh, sway from this. He is going to present that moment. And he calls it the proto-subjectivity of a world open self. It's the moment of the world open self. And he says it is the first birth of spirit and the first birth of the centered self of a uh, he's very much his generic concept for the underlying substrate of all being is spirit and the underlying concept for the uh, self as spirit is the centered self the existentially centered self so where he's, he's his system strives for a spirit centeredness uh, to achieve being the event of being is a spirit centeredness. Now, as far as the emergence of spirit here in this uh, second moment, the realm of spirit as being with its existential detachment from organic being is born. There is a de detachment from habit related intelligence, and the world open self is born. And we begin to grasp the true content of objects in their uh, essentiality. But it is very much based on a matter-of-factness of a situation, not some kind of an ideal um, projection. But the self, for him, the key is that the self initiates a change of environment. We actually do try to alter our situation. And we're doing this because we, we start setting goals. We become a goal-setting individual self. 
in order to reach goals, we start altering environment. So there is a, uh, even though we do group our feeling percepts in a matter of fact kind of a way, we start to arrange the environment toward goals, our percepts toward goals. And so the uh, plurality of percepts are unified into an objective whole projected toward the goal that we form. And we do begin at this stage then to form kind of the uh, proto system of intrinsic values and we assign them to this unity. So there is a uh, a proto subjectivity is born as a true subject uh, separation of self from the being of objects. We actually uh, end up with a uh, posited true objectivity and therefore a true subjectivity. So we have this first proto subjectivity born and it's uh, this is a moment of in gathering. We begin in gathering these essential first values into a uh, holistic unity of feeling percepts that support our goal. And the background easel or the background uh, platform is called world space. So our overall approach is to frame all of this within what Scheller calls world space and within this world space we frame our feeling percept model. Now, we're an existential centered proto-self here, proto-subjectivity. So a new subjective center is formed for the objects of the world, and objectivity becomes object of knowledge. So now we key in on uh, the object of knowledge, and existential center becomes the ground of being. Our existential centeredness becomes the true ground. So now we are uh, actually initiating the process of what Scheller calls the co-creating of the essences of Logos along with spirit. So his whole approach is the cooperative effort of the objectivity of spirit in cooperation with the subjectivity of the centered existential self, achieving spirit, who together co-create the essences of the reality of the true, the essences of the notion of the true. But it's initiated here in this uh, second moment that's just dealing with feeling percepts. So it's very important to understand that it gives a great deal of validity to this uh, two moments of ecstatic impulsion and then the uh, proto-subjectivity of the world open self. Ecstatic impulsion and world open self combine to create this uh, world of spirit and in unison with the existentially centered subjectivity that are working together to define the essences of logos. So that's a that's a lot to put on the sensate dimension and that's why uh, of course Scheller's view is an empirical psychology because he never begins with higher values of life. Uh, his entire book he said lower value works up through the higher values but higher values that we don't start there. We don't start uh, like Hegel and impose a higher ontology that comes at the end not at the beginning he said that was a mistake that Hegel made and we begin with the empirical sensate world and we give it its due recognition and its due importance so we've got a cooperative effort between ecstatic impulsion and the proto subjectivity of world open self this is all on the individual level so the obvious next step is to transfer to the communal level in order to uh, lift this uh, spiritually, existentially centered self's holistic view to a threshold where it can be discussed with others and interrogated with others in order to refine it to an even deeper level of acquiring the essences of Logos. And so he takes us to that threshold, the uh, Aristotle's Do Kunta threshold, and uh, obviously uh, Scheller, along with uh, most postmoderns, places a lot of emphasis on Aristotle's Do Kunta threshold. So that's why every phenomenology we've discussed has always brought in the Do Kunta threshold, although uh, if you remember Buffray 
really had to emphasize it to uh, correct uh, the misinterpreted slant that was being given to Husserl. So Bouffre and to Heidegger, so Bouffre came in and, and really wanted to overly emphasize the Dokunta threshold, but he did it to kind of correct things and create a balance in phenomenology. But no problem here. There is a balance. It is presented. And uh, Scheller says that, uh, and you got to love this, he says, you'd think that the a priori notions would take place at the very beginning of the system uh, in the uh, impulsion area, but a priori notions make their entrance at the Dokunta threshold. So that's interesting, I think, on his part. For him, the... Uh, Notions of the true, uh, and by the way, that's the categorical notions of the true, are uh, based on a priori insight that uh, is unveiled during our intersubjective dialogue and uh, intersubjective critique. We could critique our feeling percept models one with another and thereby unveil, uh, progressively unveil, the hidden uh, essential categories that are present. And so it's a, a true discovery of the a priori true that uh, Scheller says we already carry within ourselves as human beings. It's already there as an a priori existence. And the second aspect of the threshold is turning. He says that uh, in this dialogue we turn away from sensate experience and we suspend sensate reality and we turn toward directional sense or we turn into uh, almost exclusively the realm of uh, subjectivity and enter subjectivity to acquire the unveiling of the a priori categories. So it's uh, an important threshold because uh, when we emerge out of here into uh, the access threshold and the launch of cognitive work, we're going to emerge with uh, those proto-categories instead of feeling percepts. Because remember, we're going to copy this to the very first stage of the access threshold. And the access threshold, really, with every thinker we've discussed, is really just, just think of it as, uh, it's the fulcrum balancing stationary point of true subjectivity. It, true subjectivity is called the access threshold in phenomenology, and it is where we can turn to the unconscious or turn to consciousness. It is the centeredness of the self centered at the uh, existential access point, and therefore it's called the access threshold, and it is where the feeling percept model is first copied. Now for Scheller, he says that uh, the first thing we'll, we'll do is uh, understand that a triad takes place here when we transfer to the access threshold of negation, conversion, and end gathering. And in negation, the uh, world of the true unveils itself through the negation of the unessential aspects of that feeling percept model that we are copying here into sub subject of consciousness. And so the self takes a stance of existential striving now. We're getting ready to transition into will, uh, out of uh, passionate feeling and into will. And when we transition into existential striving of the will, we will automatically negate the non-essential out of that feeling percept model and uh, stick more closely to the unveiling of the categories. So there's no content added, he says. Scheller says there's no content added. We're simply unveiling the a priori categories that are already present in the feeling percept model. Now, second moment is conversion. We apply a constraining pressure to the Dokunta image, and that creates what he calls the ascetic ideal image. And the ascetic ideal image takes a twofold approach to the drive impulses of life uh, in that uh, sensate realm. First, we copy the uh, returned Dokunta image, and then we convert the 
debaser lower drive energies into spiritual activity. So with this new emerging categorical model, we are going to uh, begin the process of a transformation. So we're moving out of a, and as far as looking at it as a, as a hermeneutic like, uh, like Heidegger did, we're transitioning out of the, uh, the sensate realm of the unconscious to the access realm of transformation. Because Heidegger went from exchange to transformation to metamorphosis, those were his three moments. So we just passed out of exchange at the Dokunta threshold. Now we're moving into transformation, and that transformation is a transformation of the drive energy of the feeling percepts to the spiritual activity of the emerging a priori categorical concepts. So we've got ourselves a categorical conceptual model being born, and that takes us to in-gathering. And in-gathering is the centered subjectivity of the self. It's right at the center of the fulcrum of self, and so it is uh, the in-gathering of spirit as truly manifest. Uh, and there are, uh, I'll list the aspects here. The first is notion. There's a unity of the in-gathered self actualized as a uh, the internal positing of the notion of the true as the concept conceptual model. There's a self-sublation of drive energies, of the base or drive energies, because we're now transitioning to uh, spiritual activity. And uh, there is a tendency within this movement for the need of spirit to energize itself by being actualized into the external world. So we are interested in acquiring the intended entrance node so that our intentional notion can be triggered by participating in that entrance node that makes itself known. So subject, so fundamentally, subjective will energizes the notion of the true. Subjective will energizes the notion of the true through steering its content and drives toward the uh, goal-oriented value because it is a categorical value system, and positing into the external world is a positing as steering. We're going to steer the external reality, and therefore subjective positing is the energizing force that's going to actualize the logos rather than a enforce teleology. So logos equals directed forces and directed effects. Logos equals directed forces and directed effects. And we are ready to transition into the actual work of cognitive positing and realizing this deeper sense of the categorical model of value as the structure of life. And we'll pause and we'll take a look at that. Okay, our first moment is going to be the posited steering. And first of all, it is anticipatory. The categorical structure of value is posited in front of the sensate life of drives. The categorical structure of value is posited in front of the sensate life of drives. It's a steering. Positing is an attempted persuasion or steering of the spirit. It's persuasive. It's targeted. It is targeted toward the point of emergence in the external situation. And it's where the drive life powers can be appropriated by our positing. This would be similar to uh, an idea we discussed before of a bulge in the flat line of the situation. This bulging entrance node of a emerging spirit becomes our targeted area for positing. And so that brings up an interesting notion because if we got this bulge in externality and we've got the steering of subjectivity, what is the uh, overall consensus going to be concerning the logos? And so the next moment discusses the logos, and that's going to be the logos for Scheller. This is really the center of his position. Logos is the logos of sublimation. Logos is the logos of sublimation. It is a, an impulsion presence. It is present even at the impulsion stage of finitude. 
in the sensate realm of impulsion, the logos, the, the reality does contain the logos. There is an appearance of a phantasmic, or you could say phantasmal, but phantasmic vision. It marks the emergence of logos. It's a first appearing in the converging force centers that create a vision within the self. Now, what are those four centers? Remember, that was expression, intuition, and association. So expression, intuition, and association create these uh, phantasmic visions within the self. And so now we have, from what we've gathered from uh, looking at this emerging bulge, we've gathered a phantasmic vision within us, and we... Uh, end up with what he calls vision as gestalt. Logos first appears as a gestalt pattern or a temporal rhythm of interest to the existential self. So we recognize a bulge of spirit in a flatlined situation as an emerging gestalt pattern of existential importance. An emerging gestalt pattern, that's what a gestalt is, it's a, a spirit pattern that emerges. It's the bulge of a gestalt, gestalt pattern that becomes a, a vision within the self. And now sublimation becomes concept because the gestalt vision is enjoined with the subjective steering that we formed in the previous moment. And therefore, by enjoining the two in our positing, sensate being gradually becomes at the service of the higher structure of being. So... It's our subjective work of enjoining gestalt vision with a subjective positive steering. And you could say, well, gestalt vision, is that really something in externality? Well, in a way it is. It is the um, emerging gestalt pattern. But, of course, we're internalizing it, so it becomes, uh, in a way, it becomes a positive vision. You know, and a positing is an internal externality. You really have to understand that in the discussion of phenomenology because a lot of times in phenomenology, objectivity means positive objectivity, not actual objectivity. There's a difference. There's positive objectivity and actual objectivity. The vision is acquired in positive objectivity. So it does gain the significance of being considered objective by Scheller, and it is enjoined with the subjective of the steering positive notion of the true, and then we enjoin those two in our differentiation in the actual world, in the actual situation, trying to encourage it and persuade it to emerge to spirit. But a very interesting idea, I like his view, so logos is sublimation, sublimation of a sensate being gradually becoming at the service of the higher structure of being. So very, very uh, important moment for his entire position of phenomenology, logos as sublimation. And that reaches uh, the moment of the absolute. And this is our true metamorphosis because we've gone through the uh, exchange of hermeneutic as ecstatic impulsion. We've gone through the transition of that uh, feeling percept model through uh, its copying and its full manifestation and its positive steering. And now we've passed through the logos of sublimation and we reach metamorphosis. Now metamorphosis as the final hermeneutic step. It is a turn. It forces a sensate world to turn to the service of the structure of life. It is spirit-centeredness. It will be the last process of the sublimation of nature. And it is a metamorphosis of all drive energy converted to spiritual activity. All drive energy converted to spiritual activity. It involves a dovetailing because in each particular situation we create a drive driven tendency, but in the absolute moment we dovetail the drive driven tendencies together into, into an overarching greater holistic vision. So even though we may be dealing with uh, specific individual situations, and uh, when we do, after we pass through that uh, logos of sublimation, 
we do create that uh, drive driven tendency as a, a logos moment. Well, in the absolute moment, we dovetail them together. We enchain the drive driven tendencies together to create an overarching whole of absolute turn, absolute turn. And once we acquire the absolute turn in our uh, psychology, in our uh, consciousness, we can form the uh, an aesthetic mental image of that enchained whole, which is going to do what? It's going to return, this is a phenomenology, it's going to return to the unconscious as counter blow to begin working on the ecstatic impulsion moment all over again within our lives as we uh, engage our next finite secular situation. So it is the dialectical work between impulsion and idea. Impulsion and idea continue to engage in a dialectic, in a circular dialectic. And so we do return out of the absolute with this uh, aesthetic mental imaging of the dovetailed and chained drive-driven tendencies that have been um, idea conditioned by the logos of sublimation. They've been idea conditioned by the sublimation, logos as sublimation. So it's a, uh, you have to be careful, you have to understand objectivity for Scheller is uh, sometimes an objectivity that, that all phenomenologists take and that is posited objectivity in the same way that the notion of the true is a posited objectivity. Well, a vision can be a posited objectivity also. It can be a phantasmic vision that is a posited objectivity. And then that vision can become an, a gestalt pattern that we couple together with our steering positing of the uh, categorical model of value and by enjoining those two together we create true power. We create idea conditioning and idea conditioning creates tendencies. And what are tendencies? They're drive, the drive driven tendencies of, of our life in the sensate world. So it's a very very deeply rooted empirical psychology. It is a very deeply rooted empirical psychology uh, but it's the one that uh, Heidegger preferred. He preferred this overly sensate model um, over against anybody else's model. He really, Heidegger said uh, in his opinion that uh, Scheller was uh, one of the greatest philosophers of all time. Uh, and he meant that. He meant that Scheller truly was, in his view, he said for sure the greatest philosopher that he ever knew in Europe, but uh, possibly the greatest philosopher of all time. So Heidegger held him in high, high esteem. So if you want to properly understand Heidegger, uh, you would want to uh, keep this architecture that we have drawn in mind and maybe take a look at that book, The Human Place in the Cosmos by Max Scheller from Northwestern University Press. 2009. It's a very, it's a, it's a monograph. It's a, his final monograph before he died. It's very short, very, very short. I mean, talk about a hundred page book and that includes notes and everything. So very, very short, but uh, it will give you what Heidegger considered to be the greatest empirical psychology ever presented in Europe. So that's a pretty strong recommendation by Heidegger. And that'll uh, give us 30 minutes. So that'll wrap it up.